So how would you plan for an acoustic neuroma? What dose would you use? And what would happen if you don't treat it? And if you're treating an astrocytoma, what would you look for in a plan as a physicist doing a final check? How would you treat it? And how would you plan for it if you were doing a 3D treatment? So for an acoustic neuroma, first, it's good to know what some of these terms mean. This is a benign tumor. It's slow growing, and it's typically in the vestibular nerves of the inner ear or the brain. So normally, you would do a surgical removal, or you could use SRS, typically, or so SRS or VMAT. So SRS, you could potentially use cones, normally HDMLCs, whatever you normally use for your SRS treatment planning. But you could also use VMAT if it's somewhat larger. And certainly some people use VMAT with an eclipse for SRS. Now, what dose would you use? So this approximately goes, it depends on the physician, of course, but in the exam, you just need a broad range. And so 12 to 13 gray would be a good answer to get you close certainly close enough based on physician's preferences. And then if you don't treat it, what's going to happen? So first thing you got to remember, if it's near the nerves of the inner ear, you're going to have hearing loss if it continues to grow and you don't treat it. And that is because it is going to impinge on the auditory nerve. So now let's jump to astrocytoma. So what would we look for in a plan? So if you're just seeing a CT and you see what the PTV is, the first thing you want to see is where is it in terms of the chiasm? So is it wedged between the chiasm? I know that, of course, there are optic nerves there. There's the brain stem. There's a lot of OARs in the brain that we really need to plan around know our dose limits for those different structures and ensure that our beam arrangement, our field geometry, and just our plan properties account for those. You also want to see how large that, that astrocytoma is. And so depending on how the size, you can determine how conformal you can make it, what dose you take it to, and ultimately how you're going to treat it. So ideally, you want something that is very conformal. Normally, this is going to mean that you are reducing the dose to the chiasm, nerves, brainstem. But of course, there are trade-offs. If you have a really conformal plan, but you're really nuking the chiasm, you may accept lower conformality to ensure that the chiasm isn't treated as much and that side of the lesion may not get treated or have the coverage you typically see, all physician and clinic decisions there. So how would you treat it? So it depends on the size. So if it's very large, we're going to go with VMAT, and that allows you to spare the OARs. And normally when it's too big, it's just too big for SRS. So you're not going to be, a, be able to do a low fractionation, really high dose, certainly aren't going to be able to use cones. And typically, that criteria for being big is, well, so big is greater than 35 cc. So the 3D, so if we're like, okay, VMAT isn't going to work, and you just want to know, or you want to do a plan with 3D, so how would you plan it? So the first thing is I would have a left lat. I would do a PA field, and then I would want a vertex. And that would go through the top of the head. So regardless, you don't want any entrance dose. So no entrance dose to OARs. Sometimes you prefer don't have exit dose either, but again, at some point there has to be a trade-off. And if you don't have any entrance dose, which is priority one, you're probably going to end up having some exit dose. And of course, you want to meet all the OAR tolerances. And to do that, you're going to have to optimize the field weights, number one, field weights. And you're going to have to really look at the field angles. 
And you're going to have to play with those to ensure you're not getting entrance dose. But yet, of course, you need to consider the coverage of the PTV, potentially considered using wedges. And you have all the disposal of forward planning, which is 3D planning. And of course, our prescription, try to go to 60 gray when you are going with a 3D treatment. So if you have any questions on acoustic neuromas or astrocytomas, please comment below. Hope this has helped. It's good to know these specialty cases, specifically things that are in the brain, which are the physicist specialty, because they could be asking your oral exam. And it's good to know actual clinical expertise and experience that you have with these, why you plan with them the way you do, how you do, and the inner workings and details of how you would do that, or hopefully you already do that in the clinic. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks again.